everyone my name is malvika gupta and today we are going to discuss a sorting algorithm called insertion sort before starting let me show you the content which we are going to cover in this video first of all i'll be explaining you what is an ins insertion sort i'll be taking you through an example to explain insertion sort then we'll be writing a pseudo code to then code it into a c language code then i'll be explaining it time complexity what could be the time complexity in case of best case and worst case of an insertion sort because it is very important for any sorting techniques so let's begin with the introduction insertion sort is an oldest sorting technique okay and it is generally used for a small amount of data we generally do not prefer to use insertion sort when we have large amount of data available with us so generally we used to have the small amount uh, when we have a small amount of data then we prefer this insertion sort okay now the most important thing for any sorting algorithm is that whether it is an in place sorting sorting technique or not or it is stable sorting technique or not so we have two things to discuss whether it is an in place sorting technique and it is an stable sorting technique now before starting with whether the insertion sort is an in place sorting technique or not it is an in, not in place sorting technique we first should understand that what do we mean by this in place sorting technique and this stable sorting technique so in place sorting technique means that whenever we are doing the sorting part okay if i am doing applying the sorting concept for this particular algorithm if you see this list of an array so it should be done inside this array only we are not supposed to have any other array to put these elements right so this is called in place sorting now what is stable sorting always it is not possible for us to have unique elements it might be possible with that we do do have some duplicate elements present in our array so what will happen if suppose i have this kind of situation available so according to the expectation this element this one is coming first so it should be placed at the zeroth index and this one is coming after this particular this one then it should come at the first index so this is called a stable sorting that in the order which in whichever order the elements are coming if it is a duplicate element then it should be placed in the same order okay so now if you see 0 1 2 3 4 and 5 right so this is called a stable sort now insertion sort is both in place sorting and stable sorting this is the question which not very frequently been asked in any of the gate question but sometimes rarest of the rarest but you should know that yes what is in place sorting and what is stable sorting and insertion sorting is among is among those sorting techniques which is both in place and stable the example of insertion sort is very simple you all have must have you uh, played with the cards like a game where you have to arrange the cards according to a particular sequence if suppose i have i have missed one card of a in a sequence if suppose i am having a card of 2 3 4 5 and then 7 now it is my chance that i have to insert 6 inside this in between 5 and 7 to make it a pair or make it a continuous uh, you know sequence so in that case we perform the insertion sort concept that we are inserting an element using the sorting technique also that it should come at the proper position okay so let's uh, let's discuss this with an example of an array of five elements let's suppose i am taking an array of uh, suppose 4 3 2 1 5 and 6 i am taking an array of six elements okay so i have this index now what will happen in insertion sort we generally have this prep this that insertion sort always works in iterations at the end of every iteration we will get a particular value a very the smallest magnitude value fixed at the zeroth index it will be starting from zero you can you should not get confused with the bubble sort and bubble sort will be starting fixing from the n minus 1 value but here we will be starting with the zeroth value so it will go, it is going in the opposite direction right so now let's see what happens is the procedure it is not it's not like that that we have to divide we will be dividing our entire array into two parts one is your sorted array and the other one is your unsorted array this is not up 
according to some concept it is just i am assuming that one of the element is my is the part of my sorted array and one on the rest of the elements are the part of my unsorted array okay now let's see let's suppose at the starting when i am starting with the iteration one so this one this first element is the part of my sorted array this is i have assumed and this is my unsorted array so i am starting my process will be starting from here and then i have to compare it with this value so if my this value is less than the value coming at this index is less than this value then the swapping has to be performed it means that first of all i will be i will be comparing that if a1 is less than a of 0 then i have to perform swapping so you see that a1 is 3 3 is less than 4 yes condition is true so i have to perform swapping so it will be like this my array will become like this now if you see we have to keep on swapping we have to keep on decreasing the value until we are not reaching the zeroth index okay so it means if you do j was at 1 if you subtracted with j minus uh, y1 then you will get you will get the j at zeroth index and after that there is no element to be compared so this is the array which i have got after the iteration 1 now let's see this is the end of my iteration 1 let's see for the iteration for iteration 2 this much this is my sorted array and this will become my unsorted array okay now i will be comparing this element with this one. so it means i will be comparing a2 with a of 1 okay so a2 is 2 2 is less than 4 yes condition is true so first pass will say that it will become 3 2 4 1 5 6 and six. i have told you earlier that we have to move from till zero okay so now my j earlier was at j now two now it will come to one so this will be now i will be comparing these two values two and three so now we know that a1 is less than a0 yes condition is true so what will happen i have to swap these two values so it will become 2 3 4 1 5 and 6 so it will be 0 1 2 3 4 and 5 so this is the end of my iteration two. now let's go for iteration three now if you see that earlier it was only one value then we have two values now i have three values so this is my sorted array and this is my unsorted array okay now let's see what will come when i'll go for iteration 3 okay so i'll be comparing this value with this one. it means i will be comparing a3 with a2 so my j value will be here okay So now, if you see, one is less than four. Yes, condition becomes true. So it will be two, three, one, four, five, and six. So it will be zero, one, two, three, four, five. J was here, but now it will reduce to here. Now J will come here. Now I have to compare these two values. It means a two is less than a one. Yes, condition is again true because one is less than three. So I am doing it two, one, three, four. Five and six, zero, one, two, three, four, five. Okay. Now again, because J has to be reduced, J will uh, J will go from here to here. It will be on one. So A one is less than A zero. Yes, one is less than two. Condition is again true. So we will be comparing this like this. So it will be one, two, three, four, five, and six. Now you see, you can stop it over here by adding something. But now, as of now, we we have to traverse it till last element because we can find it that it is a sorted array. But it only manually we can do. We will be applying it. Maybe uh, this combination could be something different. So we have to go for the entire chain. So this is after traversing the, this many part, we have taken the three elements. Now I will be dividing my array into this is my sorted part and this is my unsorted part. Okay. now we'll be comparing this uh, with this one now you see a of 4 for this is iteration 4 so a of 4 is less than a of 3 now you see that if a of 4 is 5 5 is less than 4 if 5 is less than 4 is condition is false then you understand that that we are not supposed to check any other value lower than 4 because it is already been sorted so the array will be the same Which was at the end of your third iteration, right? So zero, one, two, three, four, and five. Now again, at the end iteration five, we'll be considering 
this as my sorted array and this as my unsorted array. Only one element left. Now let's see how to do it. So we have done it. We can check it from here for iteration 5. Okay. So I'll be checking with a of 5 is less than a of 4. No condition is again false. It means we are not supposed to check it with other values. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6. This is my sorted array. We don't have any other element because we'll be putting it over here. Then only we'll be able to check it. So I have just put my i value. i index is still here. And we have taken this particular value. I hope this is clear. As an example, if I go with the summary, you can see that number of elements which I took in this is 6. And number of iterations for 6 elements is your is 5. 1, 2, 3, 4 and then 5. Okay. So, it is 5. It means in general we can say that if number of elements equal to n, then your number of iterations is equal to n minus 1. Okay. This is fixed. Now, let's create, let's do go for pseudo. How to write a pseudo code? So I am taking it as insertion sort, the name of the pseudo code, an array, and the size of an array. Okay, let's begin it. The first one, uh, input an array size and array elements. Okay, second point. If you could understand that we have just, first of all, we need to traverse each element. We were traversing over here and then we were comparing. So what I have to do, I will be first doing the traversing. So I 0 to n minus 1. Okay. Step. Because we have to move 1 plus plus. Okay. Then what we have done, we have to set. We have to take this j. Now you see i value of i was 0 but jth value is 1. It means we were taking the value of j and it is here the value of i is 1 or here it was uh, 2. Here the value of i is 2 and then so it means that we are moving one step ahead. So I am taking it j equals to i plus 1. I hope this part is clear. Now let's take a while loop. Okay. I told you that we have to keep on doing this comparison part until we didn't reach this zeroth index. So first of all, let me break this condition by writing zero. And we were comparing a of j is less than a of j minus one, right? In this way, we were comparing. So let me take this, a temporary variable I am taking for swapping. You know that how to do the swapping, aj aj equals to aj minus 1 and then aj minus 1 equals to this is the way we keep on we do that and then we keep on decreasing the value once we have done with our swapping as we have done it in this question like first it was 2 it was at 2 2 was here then we move to here and then last right so we keep on decreasing the value of j and the third point we, we have ended the loop now print the sorted array and your now you see that maximum because two loops are running and we are doing the comparisons also so it will run in the worst case for order of n square but in best case insertion sort runs for order of n okay so before moving ahead and now i hope this pseudo code is clear to everyone with the example too now let's code it how to code it over here? Let's let me do that for you. Suppose I am doing it for the insertions. Uh, insertion sort I have given. Written the name. Hash include stdio dot h. Okay. Uh, void main. I am taking an array of size ten. It's fixed. N i j and one temporary variable I am taking. Okay. So first of all, let me. Enter the user defined size. Enter the user defined size. Scanf percent d comma m percent n. Okay. Now let me uh, enter the array elements. 
enter native for loop for this I this then scanf this way we know how to go for it AFI. so now let's do for the sorting process here I am writing the sorting process okay so first of all we have taken i equals to zero i is less than I told you that we have to put till n minus one we are not taking n to uh, i to the last value so we are setting the value of j equals to i plus one then we are applying the while loop for comparison so j is greater than zero our value one below right a of j if it is less than a of j minus one then we have to perform swapping so let's perform the swapping part a of j a of j equals to a of j minus one and then J minus one equals to ten, right? Okay, and then J minus minus to reduce the value by. Now let's print the output array. Okay, slash and I am giving just to show you the next line. I equals to zero. I is less than n, and then I plus plus. Let's print the array. So we'll do it plus D equals to comma A of I. Let's see. Okay. So let's save it. Now see if five is the size. Four, three, five, one, two. So this is the answer. One, two, three, four, five. So that's how we have got the output in the sorted array format. I hope this is clear to everyone. Okay, you can go through the video. Once again, if it's not clear, I have provided you the example how to solve it and what is in, uh, in place sorting technique, stable sorting technique. It is both kind of a sorting technique and it is the oldest one. This is the uh, pseudo code for the insertion sort and I have provided you the uh, code in C also. That's all. Thank you.